Good morning. You're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint Live. I am Jesh Kilnani. Alongside me is Namneet Saluja D'Souza. Let's go across. Uh, let's go across to to the Bloomberg Quint Bloomberg's live session. Five percent. So softer fixed asset investment. Not entirely surprising, given the crackdown on credit, given the crackdown on leverage. Because of course, fixed asset investment involves manufacturing. It involves the real estate sector. It involves infrastructure spending. Infrastructure spending has been somewhat supportive up until now, but there had been expectations that you would see to start to see a slight softening in terms of the infrastructure spending. Manufacturing. The profits there have been relatively relatively good so that component of the fixed asset investment may be holding up to some degree in terms of real estate though we've been talking about the pressure that some of developers have been coming under as a result of the tightening credit conditions here we've been talking about the fact that bonds are maturing to the value of 17 and a half billion US dollars by the end of this year that's a record for China's developers they are under squeeze so it's no surprise then that potentially the real estate number in this FAI number is potentially a little bit softer of course headwinds going forward the trade relationship with the US of course and this concerted effort by President Xi to tackle pollution and corruption as well as poverty and whether or not that's going to provide a drag going forward BBOC governor speaking last week he gung said that he expected a strong number for the first quarter he expects growth for the year to be relatively solid Tom, thank you so much for that. We're just getting some live pictures now out of Beijing. Uh, the spokesman from the Bureau of City. Let's now look at the trade setup. Uh, well, it uh, doesn't look that great given the queues uh, that we got uh, overnight from the U.S. market. Uh, so the Dow Jones actually closed more than 2%, uh, 200 points higher after Europe largely closed flat. Now, if you look at Asian indices, uh, the Nikkei and the Hang Seng, those actually opened in the green and have slipped into the red. And the SGX Nifty too, that is suggesting around a 20-point downtick for the Indian market. Now, if you look at uh, some of the ADRs, uh, how they actually panned out, largely may closed mix led by Tata Motors which declined more than 2% followed by ICICI Bank and Vedanta which also closed in the negative. As far as the gainers were concerned we had uh, Wipro and Infosys from the IT space. Those gained more than 2% each followed by Dr. Reddy's and HGFC Bank which also closed marginally higher. Now if you look at uh, some of the commodity queues strong queues coming in from the oil markets as well. Now oil currently is trading about uh, uh, half a percent positive but remember that overnight we did see a near 2% fall for the oil markets. As far as the base metal space is concerned, uh, we, we saw that uh, the base metal index actually resumed the upward uh, rally, uh, led by aluminium, which gained uh, more than 5%, and we had the nickel and lead, which also gained uh, nearly 3% each. As far as the precious metal space is concerned, uh, gold actually has uh, continued its rally and closed above 1350 per ounce overnight. Now, if you look at the fund flows that we got for ourselves, uh, so the foreigners actually sold nearly 400 crores uh, worth of uh, equity, while the domestic institutions uh, pumped in 300 crores. But for the month itself, FIS have actually sold 900 crores, and the uh, domestic institutions have pumped in nearly 3,500 crores. Now, if you look at uh, some of the key indices that we have, so the Nifty Bank actually closed about uh, half a percent in the positive. The mid cap and the small cap index uh, extended their rally to uh, two days and closed higher by about uh, six tenths of a percent to nine tenths of a percent. Now, if you look at the gainers, uh, the sectoral gainers, we had uh, Nifty Realty and Nifty Pharma, which gained in trade more than 1.5 percent gains for themselves. And the Nifty PSU Bank and Nifty IT index managed to close lower by about half a percent or just little more than that. Now, if you look at the India VIX that actually snapped its two day losing streak and ended nearly 1% higher. As far as the contribution for the uh, stocks were concerned, what led to the near 50 point rally for the Nifty? We had HDFC twins which led the way, followed by ITC and Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, as far as the losers are concerned, we had Infosys and Tata Motors, uh, followed by SBI and Reliance. But Namneet uh, looks like uh, volatility is back in the market and has snapped its uh, two day losing streak. What FNO cues are you picking up? 
Well, if you look at yesterday's trading session, the fall was largely in the beginning because of emphasis, but there was a good recovery. Even if you look at the futures and options queues for Nifty, open interest was up nearly 1%. Remember, but now we're trading above all the key averages, be it 20, 50, or 100-day moving average for Nifty. Uh, pull up the Bank Nifty futures. That was actually in focus where the open interest was up almost 4% for Bank Nifty. We'll be watching out for that mark of 25,500 for that one. Jayesh has already addressed the India Volatility Index, uh, but I just want to mention that when we opened in trade yesterday, India VIX was up somewhere about 3.5%, but it closed with gains of only about 1%. In terms of put call ratio for Nifty and Bank Nifty, let's just pull up that plate. Uh, the Nifty PCR went up to 1.65. The Bank Nifty PCR went up substantially to levels of about 1.53. What was the reason for Nifty PCR moving up? Pull up the option strikes. That's going to tell you the base for this market is moving higher. If you look at the maximum OI concentration on the put side is now at the 10,300 strike and on the call side is right here. Now, this is the change in open interest for yesterday's session. There was a lot of put riding seen for the 10,400 and the 10,500 strike, whereas on the call side, some bit of unwinding seen, but for the 10,700, which is the out-of-the-money strike, that saw some addition coming by in yesterday's session. What did the institutions do? Nothing major, actually. We did see open contracts being added for index futures in both longs as well as short side, but remember, they remain net short in index futures to the tune of 73%. Even if you look at the index options data, there, was, there were contracts added across the board, be it for call long, put long, call short, or put short. Let me tell you the stock futures, which will be in focus in today's session. Reliance Communication is the new one, which has entered into the band, so watch out for that one. It was also one of the top losers in yesterday's session among the FNO securities. Besides that, DCB Bank had huge fresh long position. Let's see if that buying can continue. 37% higher for OI buildup. In the second half of the session, you also saw stock like Arvind building up gains, so watch out for that one too, because on the future side, 11% higher for open interest, where some fresh longs were being built up for traders. Well, that's about the futures and option queues for today's session. Let's now head across to Bloomberg's Haslinda Amin for some of the top stories from Globe. President Trump has overruled his own experts and accused China and Russia of devaluing their currencies. That's despite the Treasury's latest report saying neither country is a manipulator. He tweeted, Russia and China are playing the currency devaluation game as the U.S. keeps raising interest rates. Not acceptable. The president didn't provide any evidence to sub sub substantiate the claim. President Trump intends to nominate PIMCO's Richard Clarida as Fed Vice Chair. He's seen as having experience of the financial markets after more than a decade at PIMCO. An insight into how Washington works from his time at the Treasury under George W. Bush. Clarida is a longtime Columbia University professor and will succeed Stanley Fisher, who stepped down from the Fed in October. A new Bloomberg survey says the Bank of England will raise rates next month, but then press pause until 2019. About three quarters of the analysts we spoke to now see a hike in May, up from 54% previously, with the next rise not until February. Mark Carney has long stressed that the BOE will follow a limited and gradual path away from record low levels. The U.S. and U.K. have issued an unprecedented joint alert saying Russia is using compromised computer networking equipment to attack companies and government agencies. The Department of Homeland Security, the FBI and Britain's National Cyber Security Center warned specifically of attacks on routers. They say individuals and business should ensure software is up to date and passwords are secure. 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Haslinda Amin, and this is Blimba. Back to local equity market stock of the day is Omkar Speciality Chemical is not a good development for the company. Bank of Baroda has actually gone ahead and classified the company's loan account, loan account as a non-performing asset. Now back in September 2017, Crystal downgraded loan of a 255 crore long-term loan facilities, uh, given uh, reflecting the weak uh, liquidity condition that the company was having, which resulted into development of LC facilities. For 
for over 30 days. Post that, we saw the company undergoing scheme of arrangements between the parent and the subsidiary, and it also demerged its API. Uh, it's also demerged its wet API business into a separate entity that is Lasa Supergenrix, which was now an independently listed company. Post that, we saw Brickwork uh, rating classifying the account of the company as normal within the uh, within the banking scenario, factoring in all the delayed scenarios that the company witnessed on account of non-payment. If you look at the shareholding pattern, well, it's not a pretty picture there. So if you look at the promoter shareholding pattern, uh, the promoter stake stands at a good 28%, while the public shareholding stands at 72%. If you look at a span of one time, promoter holding has actually come down from 41% that we saw in the March quarter of the previous year to 27% currently. Also, if you look at the pledge of the shares, 58% of the total promoter shareholding has been pledged. Financial condition, again, is reflective of the underlying pain uh, that the company is currently going through. If you look at the debt picture, uh, it is a, a debt of around 192 crore for a company with a market capitalization of around 64 crore. If you look at the financial situations like sales, operating profit, and the net profit for nine months ended, you would see the company is actually sitting with an operating loss of 51 crore. The net loss also stands at 50 crore for nine months it ended for this company. Let's get your check on the commodities and currency space, starting off with commodities and oil prices. Uh, that is actually in focus and gained about half a percent in early Asian hours. But remember, it did actually fall nearly 2% overnight. Now, this is largely on the back of uh, uh, the U.S. inventory, which is likely to rise as much as 1.5 million barrels for last week. That is as per a Bloomberg survey. As far as brokerages on oil is concerned, we have one from J.P. Morgan, and they say that oil may rise towards uh, the 80 per barrel mark if Iran sanctions actually return. Shifting focus to the base metal space, the LME base metal index uh, posted its biggest jump uh, since uh, 14th of Feb this year, uh, led largely led by aluminium, which was up more, than, which was up nearly 5% and clocked its highest level since 2011. Now the market is contemplating there is a possibility that uh, Rusal will actually be forced to cut its production, so we'll have to wait and watch what actually happens over there. Now global zinc market actually recorded a surplus for itself. That is according to data published by the international lead zinc uh, supply group uh, that we have. Now if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, most of these base metals are in fact trading with a positive bias. As far as precious metals are concerned, gold actually continued its rally and surged above the 13.50 uh, per ounce mark. Now this was largely on the back of uh, the dollar index which has set a new low uh, in the month of April for itself. Uh, with that, uh, Saloni, what cues are you picking up given that the dollar is, uh, you know, clocking a low for itself? So speaking about dollar first, it, is, uh, it has extended declines for the second consecutive session today. It is uh, hovering around uh, the level of 89.40. Now this is despite a rebound in retail sales data which came in yesterday. It came in at uh, six tenth of a percent in March, uh, uh, snapping a three month decline. Well, speaking of pound, it has hit its post Brexit high of 1.43 uh, per dollar mark, uh, largely supported by hopes for a better Brexit deal as well as central bank uh, rate hike in the near term. Well, speaking of Indian rupee, it weakened by a good uh, 29 paise yesterday or four tenths of a percent to close at over a six month high of 65.49 levels against the dollar. Now, this was on the back of widening trade deficit concerns uh, amid heightened geopolitical tensions which is going on. Also, inclusion of India in on uh, US currency manipulator uh, list has dampened currency market sentiments elsewhere rising crude oil prices uh, and ongoing global tra trade tensions uh, largely weighed on the rupee yesterday. Well, speaking of bond markets, sovereign bonds declined yesterday as yield on the 10-year benchmark security rose nearly 6 basis point to end at 7.49%. Now, in terms of flows into debt market, global funds reduced their rupee debt holdings yesterday for the second consecutive session. They reduced their debt portfolio in the tune of 840 crore according to NSDL data. And lastly, speaking of dollar rupee, now it is trading flat in the non-deliverable forward markets, which indicates a flat opening for Indian rupee in today's trade.
Well, among stocks that we're tracking uh, in trade today is going to be Jai Bharat Maruti on the back of uh, its earnings for the fourth quarter that it reported yesterday. A mixed set of numbers coming in. Their revenues fell by about 1%, while net profit dropped by a sharper 14%, mainly on account of a higher tax outgo. Because operationally, EBITDA grew by 14% and margins also saw an improvement of about 130 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, that apart, we're also tracking Bajaj Electricals, which has um, one orders worth 3,570. 8 crores. Then you have Soba Limited, which has announced its foray into Gujarat. They've said that they will be investing 500 crores for a residential project in Gift City. We're also tracking Blue Star Limited, which has partnered with Sands International and its partners. And this is mainly to distribute its products in Saudi Arabia. So watch out for that name. JM Financials Unit has acquired additional 8.78 lakh shares in microfinance companies Pandana Financial. Uh, so this is the second tranche of acquisition that they have completed. With that, their stake uh, now in uh, Spandana has increased to 12.95% and 6.5% on a fully diluted basis. Phoenix Mills is another stock that we're tracking, and this is on the back of a Times of India report, which says that the company and its uh, joint venture with CPPIB will uh, buy land in from LNT in uh, Bengaluru for 700 Cross, watch out for that name. And also for Idea Cellular, where a Mint report says that the Aditya Billa Group is in talks with PE funds to sell stake in promoter entities of Idea to be able to raise funds of $1 billion for the company. So watch out for that name. Also a couple of stocks in the back of bulk deals that we saw yesterday. GSS Infotech, where Nomura Singapore bought 0.6% stake. The stock already ended 18.6% higher. Uh, let's see if we see additional uh, or um, uh, another uh, set of reaction in trade today as well. Team Lease, where Franklin India Smaller Companies Fund has bought 1.8% stake. And then you have two promoter entities. Uh, one is promoter HR Offshore Ventures with sold 1% and another promoter entity with sold half a percent uh, stake yesterday. So total of an and a half percent uh, stake of uh, promoter entities uh, selling over there. Majesco is another uh, name that we're tracking where promoter Sudha Karam sold half a percent stake in a bulk deal yesterday. So these are some of the stocks you need to watch out for. My own take has been that uh, banks, both private and public sector, their governance, their compliance, their regulatory framework, etc., all needs uh, a, a, a good look. I've, uh, I've personally um, uh, gone through my committee report again, and I feel that there are lots of gem, lots of good things, uh, you know, in there, and which we should be looking at at this point of time. Uh, <clears throat> the banking, the banking sector, has, however, on sort of started, uh, you know, uh, giving out money in the sense that you know that the you know credit growth uh, to uh, industry, the non-food credit has started growing. So the fear that the banking sector had kind of been caught in a logjam and sort of frozen, I think that's not there. And uh, there are, there are, you know, and there is a rather smart growth in some of the private sector banks, and especially, uh, you know, the growth of trucks and tractors and and, and autom automobile and two wheelers is rising on the crust, crest of, you know, retail loan. So what has happened is that the nature of banking credit has changed from that being very focused on project lending to I think retail lending and to you know and and, and, and I suppose moving forward to agricultural lending etc but I think this um, this attempt if you like it, it, at, at uh, seeing at sort of positing a crisis in the banking sector I think that's not fair I want to come back to what you said in the speech where you had a, a GDP target of 7.5 percent uh, for 1819 an average of 8.5 up to 2022 and uh, double digits in 2022 what are you basing that on sir uh, looking at uh, uh, the situation that exports are in currently uh, the trade deficit has widened um, manufacturing is still gasping to get itself up to previous levels uh, what drives this optimism, Mr. Kumar? Look, for the first time, the economy is the, the economic system is much more transparent, uh, much more, much cleaner, much formal, etc. And so that will make this growth not a just a spurt, no, not just a sort of you know a flash in the pond, but a sustained recovery. And find the other thing that I said to you uh, in, my, in my speech that the government's uh, focus on inclusion and uh, putting more money and putting more public services in the hands of the poor. 
will mean higher productivity, will mean higher consumption demand, and that will and that will push this growth. But you know, my real, real optimism comes from the fact that the in India at the moment, uh, the there is the process of putting together in place a development state is on and is being pursued relentlessly, and that will be, enable us to close the gulf between the private and public sector. And once these two come on the same page, I don't think there's anything that's stopping India from achieving double-digit growth, which we must achieve uh, you know, uh, to, to meet our employment aspirations and requirements. So Indian Oil Corporation has signed a joint venture with Saudi Aramco for its Aratnagiri Refinery Petrochemicals Limited. So we have Director of Refineries, Mr. Ram Gopal, joining with us to give us more details about this joint venture. So, Mr. Gopal, good morning. Can you give us a bit more details about this joint venture that you have signed with Aramco? Yeah, this is a 60 million ton refinery, which we are going to put up in West Coast or Apnagiri, in a place uh, called uh, Bubble Body. The site selection is going on. And... Uh, uh, the JV, you may, might be aware that uh, three PSUs are there and we have signed an uh, MOU with uh, Saudi Aramco in the recently held uh, International Energy Forum on 11th April at Delhi. So how much stake will Aramco okay. have in, in this refinery. joint How much stake will Aramco uh, have in this joint venture? Uh, they will be forming a consortium and they will be holding uh, equal partnership. That's what is the tentative plan that we have to work out, in fact. So, as of now, not a specific so stake has been given to them? No. Okay. And will Indian Oil Corporation give uh, give away its 50% stake or uh, the other two PSUs that is It's HPC? not Indian Oil Corporation alone. We yeah. have, on one side, we have a domestic block having three oil companies, IOCL, BPCL and HPCL. And on the other side, you will have a non-domestic block. It, it may have uh, more than that one. We are, we are working on that. And they will have about uh, equal partnership. So currently, I guess Indian Oil Corporation, HPCL and BPCL own stake in around 50%, 25% and 25% ratio, right? That's right. So uh, every each all the three companies will be giving up stake proportionately or only one of the companies will be uh, giving up stake? That's what I was asking. No, no, all three. These details we are yet to work out. We have just signed an MOU with an understanding that these ones will be working out subsequently. And what is the kind of investment that will uh, be coming in, in this refinery? Uh, the refinery is estimated to cost around 3 lakh crores. Recently, we had some news reports which said that there were uh, uh, issues related to the land acquisition for this refinery. Uh, what has been the update on that? Uh, the land, uh, Maras, along with Maharashtra government, in fact, Maharashtra government is uh, arranging this for us. Uh, very actively, they are pursuing with the people, and the process is on. There have been oppositions from various uh, opposition parties. Do you think uh, that will be resolved in meantime? I uh, we hope so. We are highly optimistic, and uh, yes, it should get resolved. Because this mega refinery is of national importance, as well as international importance. This will open up uh, Maharashtra uh, uh, for a lot of growth. Everybody is understanding that and uh, everybody is working towards that. So Maharashtra government is keen to give us the land. Uh, lastly, can you give us a bit details about the timelines of this project? Uh, this kind of a project should take at least uh, five to seven years for completion. So you will be completed in phase, yes, uh, yes. completing it. This will be a fast track project. So you are looking to complete this uh, project in uh, phases or and one go. Pardon? Number will again? you be completing this project in phases or will it uh, just uh, will will it just be completed in one uh, go? No, these details, these details, we are uh, we are on the process of working. Okay, it may be in two phases also. Okay, we are sir. Working thank on you, that. sir. That would be all, sir. Thank you for jo uh, speaking yeah, to Bloomberg. Thank you. Thank you. Right. That's all we have in today's session of All You Need to Know. Stay tuned for All You Need to Know. Uh, stay tuned for Indian Open.